Hello boys and girls. I have another new friend to introduce to you and she is here to help us with our fiction selection today. Boys and girls, please meet Lucy the Ladybug. Oh, hi there boys and girls. My name's Lucy and I'm a ladybug. Now Mrs. Neva, I understand that you are studying insects now with your class? That's correct, Lucy. Well, I'm an insect, as you know, and I'm also a member of the beetle family. Oh, really? Yes, ladybugs are actually a kind of beetle. Hmm, and beetles are insects? Okay, got it. And you know what else? I also go through the four stages of the insect life cycle. Egg, larva, pupa, and adult. I'm an adult ladybug. Very good. Now, I understand. You have a fiction selection you would like us to read today. Yes, Mrs. Neve, I will go get it. Off she goes. Here it is, Mrs. Neve. It's one of my favorite, favorite books. It's called Daisy's Bug. Let me guess. Daisy's Bug. Is it a ladybug? Why, yes, it is. Let's take a look. Oh, yes. You can see the ladybug on the flower. She's beautiful, isn't she? Indeed she is. Now, the little girl, her name is Daisy? That's right, and that's Daisy's bug. Very good. I'll listen to the story over here, Mrs. Neve. That's nice, dear. We'll set Lucy down and get to the story. The title, Daisy's Bug. Now, you'll notice you've got your A-I to give you long A, day. You'll notice the Y is acting like a long E, like a vowel, daisies, and then you'll notice an S at the end. Daisies, now this does not mean that there's more than one little girl named Daisy in the story or more daisies like that, like, you know, we have two Daniels in our class and two Milas in our class. It's not that kind of S at the end at all. Take a look at that little line up at the top right after the Y. That's called an apostrophe. It's usually a little curvy looking. And then there's the S. And what that lets the reader know is that, the, that something belongs to that word. This is Daisy's bug. The bug belongs to Daisy. So now you know, Daisy's bug. Now, the author of our book, it is by Anna Houston. Yes, this is our own Mrs. Houston, one of our recess supervisors. She is the author of this book. It is illustrated by Stephen Adams. He drew the pictures, but Mrs. Houston wrote the story. So now, I think Mrs. Reese may have read this book to you at the library a while back, but a good book is always worth reading again, and Mrs. Houston wrote a very good book. So let's hear. Daisy's Bug, and it's fiction, of course. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Daisy. She had soft brown hair, lovely brown eyes, and a tiny little nose. She also had something very special about her. Daisy had two perfect freckles, one on each side of her nose. Daisy loved lots of things, what she loved the most was putting on her red dress, tying her favorite red ribbon in her hair, stepping into her favorite dancing slippers, and twirling in the grassy field behind her house. There she is twirling. It does look like fun, doesn't it? There were lots of things that Daisy did not like as well. She disliked bugs the most creepy, crawly, icky bugs. In fact, every time she saw one, she would run away screaming. There she goes. And look, it's just a little tiny ant there on the water spigot. Oh my. One beautiful spring morning, Daisy woke up and looked out her bedroom window. She saw something amazing and beautiful. The grassy green field behind her house was full of daisies, wonderful white-petaled flowers with centers as yellow as the sun. 
Daisy was so excited that all she could think about was twirling in them. She put on her red dress, tied her red ribbon in her hair, slipped into her dancing slippers, and dashed outside to the field. It is a beautiful sight. Daisies are one of my favorite flowers. They look so cheerful. As soon as Daisy got to the field, she began to twirl and dance all around the flowers. She got so dizzy, she had to stop and sit down for a while. Mm, twirling can do that to you. All of a sudden, Daisy heard a little voice. It was a girl's voice, and it was really angry. Look, look, look at what you have done, the little voice said. Daisy looked all around and saw nobody. Look at my beautiful stage, continued the little voice. You sat on it. Daisy was having a hard time finding where the little voice was coming from, and then she looked down. It was a little ladybug, and she was pointing straight up at Daisy. There's Daisy. Now, if you look real closely, you can see the two perfect freckles on Daisy's face one on each side of her nose. Daisy was so afraid of bugs that she jumped up and ran as fast as she could out of the field, screaming the whole way. Daddy, Daddy, Daisy frantically yelled. There's a bug in my field. Daisy's daddy kissed her on top of her head and said, of course there are bugs in the field, princess. Lots of them. It's probably not what Daisy wanted to hear. Daisy could not believe her ears. Nobody had told her there were bugs in her field. Just then, Daisy realized that she had lost her special red ribbon that she tied into her hair. Oh no! she cried, and when she looked out to the field, she saw her ribbon lying in the grass right where she had seen the ladybug. Daisy knew that if she wanted her ribbon back, she would have to go out to the field and get it. Oh, what about the bug? She groaned to herself. What do you think Daisy will do? What's your prediction? Well, let's see what Mrs. Houston wrote for to happen next. Very quietly and slowly, Daisy tiptoed to the field where, she, where her red ribbon was. When she picked up her ribbon, she heard that tiny little voice again, but this time it was sad. When Daisy looked down, she saw the little ladybug and she was crying. Daisy was not scared of the little ladybug anymore. Now she felt bad for the little bug. Oh, she is seeing the ladybug in a whole new way. Yeah, when somebody's crying and sad, it makes you feel sorry for them, doesn't it? Next page. What's the matter? Daisy asked slowly. The little ladybug looked up at Daisy. You crushed my dancing stage, and then you ran away from me screaming, she cried. Daisy looked down at the flower that was squished to the ground where she was sitting. Daisy handed the little ladybug her ribbon so she could wipe her tears away with it. There are lots of flowers here, Daisy said. wondering why the ladybug was so upset over one of them being squished. The little ladybug looked up at Daisy and asked, Why did you run away from me screaming? Well, Daisy said, I don't like bugs. They are creepy, crawly, and icky. The little ladybug looked shocked. That is not true, she said. I am not creepy, crawly, 
or icky. I am as pretty as a princess. The little ladybug fluttered her red wings and twirled around. This reminded Daisy of when she would twirl in her red dress. It reminds me of that too. How about you? Well, I do like your spots and red wings, Daisy said. What is your name? The little ladybug smiled at Daisy and said, Lady, of course. What is your name? My name is Daisy, Daisy said, smiling back at the little bug. I like your red dress and spots too, Lady said to Daisy. Now Daisy was shocked. I do not have spots, Daisy said very loudly. You sure do, said Lady with a smile. You have two, one on each side of your nose. Daisy thought for a second and realized that Lady was right. She did have spots. <laughs> Just like ladybugs have spots, huh? These two have a lot in common, don't they? In common means things that are the same about them. I like to dance too, said Lady. And Lady showed Daisy how she could fly and dance around on the white petals of her flowers. That is wonderful, Daisy said as she clapped her hands. You are not creepy, crawly, or icky at all. You are beautiful. Daisy and Lady spent the rest of the day dancing through all the daisies in the field. Daisy was not afraid of bugs anymore. At least not ladybugs. definitely sees the lady in a different way now. The end. Oh, what a great story. Daisy's bug. I really like it, Mrs. Neve. Yes, I do too. And, you know, learn a good lesson there from Daisy, huh? Uh, when you're afraid of something, maybe try to look at it in a, different, in a different light. And also, remember the W verse, when I am afraid, I will trust in you. Yeah. Thanks for reading it, Mrs. Neve. Oh, you're welcome, and thank you, Mrs. Houston, for writing it. Well, ah, the daisies. They are so lovely, aren't they, the daisy flowers? This reminds me. Have you been working on your daisy chains for mom for Mother's Day? I've added some more links to my chain. Here it is. Now I have all eight links uh, put together here now. How are yours coming along? Now, don't worry. If you have not finished your art project yet for mom, you've got plenty of time. Uh, today's Monday. Mother's Day isn't till next Sunday, the 10th. So you have time to work on it. Uh, if you want to add more links to your chain, you could if you want. They're so lovely and mom will be able to hang it up somewhere. Oops, I got to hang it up where you can see it. Isn't that pretty? Mom's going to love it. Now, of course, we're going to be working on a, some mother, a Mother's Day card for mom too later this week. And then you'll have your song to sing for her too. I thought this would be a good time to think about the uh, last verse of the song, uh, the part that says, you taught me about Jesus. Um, it goes like this. You taught me about Jesus and his special love for me. Now, um, mom is a wonderful teacher, as you know. And the most important thing that any teacher can teach to you is that Jesus loves you. Mom has been teaching you that, hasn't she? Um, she, um, she is letting you know that Jesus will love you forever. Let's do that much so far. Well, you taught me about Jesus and his special love for me and how we'll be together for all eternity. Yes, this is another one of those exceeding great and precious promises from God's word that we will be together 
with Jesus forever. Um, eternity, it means forever. Uh, everlasting. Remember the V verse? Uh, verily, verily, I say to you, he that believes on me has everlasting life. That's eternity, forever. Well, not only will we live forever, but we'll get to be with Jesus and with other people that love Jesus. So you and mom are going to be together forever. Isn't that wonderful? I know I'm looking forward to seeing my mom in heaven and being with her forever. So let's do that much so far. Will you taught me about Jesus and his special love for me and how we'll be together for all eternity. Here's the next part. Well, I know that the Savior lives. We know that Jesus is alive, the first Easter and all. Well, I know that the Savior lives and he's here in this place. Jesus has promised that he is always with us, remember? So he is there with you wherever whatever place you're in he's there with you well let's do that punch so far you taught me about Jesus and his special love for me and how we'll be together for all eternity well I know that the Savior lives and he's here in this place I see him smiling back at me when I look in your face it's true Jesus uses people to show his kindness and to help. That's part of his plan. When you're helping someone, showing them the love of Jesus, it's kind of like you're being Jesus to that person. Um, and that's what mom does for you, right? Uh, she shows you the love of Jesus every day. And uh, so when you look at her smile, it's, it's almost like you're seeing Jesus smile at you. Pretty cool, huh? So let's do that much, uh, the last verse, and then we'll do the whole thing. Ready? And this is the part that's just talking. It's the last verse. So kind of snap your fingers to the beat. You taught me about Jesus and his special love for me and how we'll be together for all eternity. Well, I know that the Savior lives and he's here in this place. I see him smiling back at me when I look in your face. So... Happy, happy Mother's Day. Mother, i just like to say, you're the greatest of all time, and I'm thankful that you're mine, mine, thankful that you're mine. And then they do repeat the verse, or the uh, chorus again. And it occurred to me that you might not be able to see what my other arm is doing in the video. I'm going like this. I'm putting my elbow on that hand, like this. so it's like this. See what I mean? Yeah. You repeat the chorus again. So, happy, happy Mother's Day. Mother, I'd just like to say, you're the greatest of all time, and I'm thankful that you're mine, mine, thankful that you're mine. Da, 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 And then do the big finish with your arms up like that. Mom is simply going to love it. We'll practice it with the music now. Remember how the first part goes. Um, Oh, mom, oh, mom, my wish for you on this your special day is rest and relaxation and a nap along the way. We keep you super busy 12 months out of the year. Sometimes I think you go to sleep with a cell phone in your ear. That's how it begins. So we'll do it this time with the music. And remember, this isn't supposed to be a solo with Mrs. Neve. You need to sing along too. Okay, here we go. Get ready. Oh, mom, oh, mom, my wish for you on this your special day is rest and relaxation and a nap along the way. We keep you super busy. 12 months out of the year sometimes i think you go to sleep with a cell phone in your ear i don't know how you do it it's a wonder you don't drop but you're the best number one the cream of the crop so happy happy mother's day 
Mother, I just like to say, you're the greatest of all time, and I'm thankful that you're mine, mine, thankful that you're mine. You're a cook, a chauffeur, a teacher, coach, and nurse. You're a cook, a chauffeur, a teacher, coach, and nurse. And everything for every job you keep right in your purse. With me, you're always patient when I drop things that splat. You never even lost your cool that time I shaved the cat. So, happy, happy Mother's Day. Mother, I just like to say, you're the greatest of all time. And I'm thankful that you're mine, mine, thankful that you're mine. You taught me about Jesus. You taught me about Jesus and his special love for me and how we'll be together for all eternity. Well, I know that the Savior lives and he's here in this place. I see him smiling back at me when I look at your face. So, happy, happy Mother's Day. Mother, I just like to say, you're the greatest of all time and I'm thankful that you're mine, mine, thankful that you're mine. So, happy, happy Mother's Day. Mother, I just like to say, you're the greatest of all time, and I'm thankful that you're mine, mine, thankful that you're mine, mine, thankful that you're mine. Big finish, yeah. Oh, you're going to do a great job. Mom is going to be so blessed. Now, uh, we were going to be practicing it through the, through the week, and you will know it by Sunday. No worries. Uh, also, when you sing it for mom on Sunday, you might, if you want the music in the background, I will be recording a video of just the music, maybe some flowers or something in the picture because you, you don't need Mrs. Neve singing it there. Mom just wants to hear you. So we'll have that ready to go for you for Sunday. All right. Uh, okay, boys and girls, thank you so much for being good listeners. Thank you, boys and girls. And remember, the H first. Right. Honor your father and your mother. Oh, yeah. Be a blessing to them, not just on Mother's Day, not just on Father's Day, but all the time. God bless you, boys and girls. Love you. Love you.